Got another video for A-level chemistry multiple choice practice. So this is the fourth one for AS chemistry. Got separate playlists for A-level, inorganic and physical and organic chemistry if you wanted to check those out. Hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, why don't you consider doing that? And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so make a start. So which statement about the periodic table is not correct? Well, A is correct. So is B. So is C. D is the wrong one because the halogen group reactivity decreases as you go down the group. Number two, easiest thing to do is draw them out to see the angles and you can see straight away in A, we've got an angle of 120 degrees. So that's the answer. Number three, so we take the MR of two nitrogens, because it's NH4 twice, divided by the MR of the whole thing, multiplied by 100, get it as a percentage. So you can see C is the answer there. Moving on to four, so you could, if you wanted to, work out all the atom economies for the four reactions and see which ones are smallest, but obviously that's going to take quite a long time. So the other way to do it is just, if you look at the waste products, anything with sort of heavy waste products, can't be the answer. So B and C are definitely not right. So we're left with A and D and you'll notice they both produce the same waste product H2O. So now we need to consider the MR of H2O relative to the organic product. And in D that's smaller. So that's going to give you the best in terms of atom economy. Number five, so the important thing to say at the very start of this is that the volume is proportional to the moles. So I've written up the equation again and the volumes that we're given in the question. So we've got 8 dm cubed of NO, 6 dm cubed of O2, and obviously at the start we won't have any NO2. So the first thing we've got to do is establish which is the limiting and which is the excess reagent so we can work out how much product we're going to make. So if we think about the NO first, you've got eight decimeters cubed of that. That's gonna need half as many dm cubed of O2. So it's gonna need four. Well, there's six, so there's definitely enough um, O2 there. So the NO will all react. It's going to be the limiting reagent. So that automatically means that the O2 is the excess. We'll just show, we'll just prove that now. So for all of the O2 to react, we're going to need twice as many decimeters cubed of NO. We're going to need 12. We've only got eight. So um, the O2 won't all react, therefore it's in excess. So what does that mean? It means that all of the NO is going to react, so you'll have nothing left at the end. Four decimeters cubed of the O2 will react, so you'll have two left at the end. But if you look at the ratio between NO and NO2, it's one to one. So if eight decimeters cubed of NO reacts, eight decimeters cubed of NO2 is gonna form. So you can see what have we got left at the end of the reaction? We've got two and eight, we've got 10 decimeters cubed. So B was the answer. Number six, ideal gas equation, which we've got to rearrange and calculate V from. So we'll just put the numbers in and just be careful with units. So there's the numbers in there. Just be careful with the temperature. It's gotta be in Kelvin and be careful with the pressure, it's got to be in pascals. So that's coming out at 2.59 times 10 to the minus four meters cubed. Remember meters cubed, are the units for volume in the ideal gas equation. So we can get rid of the 145s, so they've got to be wrong. So first thing I'm doing is putting it into decimeters cubed by multiplying the meters cubed by 1000, 0.259. No, we haven't got that as an option, so that option D is wrong, 259 dm cubed can't be right. So we'll multiply it by a thousand again to get it into centimeters cubed. 259 centimeters cubed, option B. Number seven, so there's the equation for the reaction between X and Cl2. So we've got a nice one to one ratio between X and Cl2. So if we've got 0.01 moles of um, chlorine, there must be the same number of moles of X. We know the mass, we know the moles, we can calculate the MR. So the MR is coming out at 24, so it's going to be magnesium, so option B. 
Number eight, what's the formula for copper one phosphate five? So copper one means copper one plus. We've been given the phosphate five um, ion formula. So what ratio of those ions is gonna give us the compound? It's going to be option D, Cu3PO4. Number nine, we need to look at the oxidation numbers for all the chlorine species in those reactions. So I'll just do that now. So looking at A, chlorine's gone from zero to minus one and plus one. So that's disproportionation. So it's been oxidized and reduced, so it's not A. Same thing's happening in B and C actually. So they're all wrong. So it's got to be D and you can see that it is because the Cl's gone from minus one up to zero in chlorine. Number 10, so I've highlighted the activation energy for the forward reaction. You can see it's 150, so A is wrong. B, there's the activation energy for the reverse reaction. So that's going to be 120 plus 150, so that's 270. That's the right answer. Number 11, so you can see I've written up exothermic next to the delta H. That's because the sign is negative. So that rules out A and D. So let's look at B. The enthalpy change for the reverse reaction is plus 184.6. Yep, that's right, because all you do is change the sign of the enthalpy change. C is wrong because the enthalpy change of formation of HCl is going to be half that value because this reaction is producing two moles of HCl, not one. Number 12, first thing I'm going to do is rule out A and B straight away. Completely wrong. The activation energy does not change if you change the temperature. C and D are both saying the right thing. The molecules do collide more frequently, but the important thing about rate is the molecules have to have energy greater than the activation energy. So C is the best explanation for the increase of rate with temperature increase. Number 13, so a catalyst when it's added to a system in equilibrium will increase the rates of both reactions by the same amount. So the statement that matches that is B. Number 14, just knocked up the usual sketch to explain the orbital overlap in a um, carbon-carbon double bond. So you can see the carbon atoms have got a sigma bond between them. So that's the end-to-end -end or direct overlap between two orbitals. So there's that shared pair of electrons there. And then you've got on each carbon P orbital with one electron in but they overlap sideways and make this region of space here and below as well. So the pair of electrons in the pi bond can either be up here or down here. So what have we got? We've got one sigma and one pi. So A is the answer. Number 15, so we'll just go through the terms one at a time and rule things out as we go. So unsaturated, we have to have carbon-carbon multiple bonds or a benzene ring. So that rules out B, because there's none of those. Alacyclic, so it's got to be a ring, but it can't be a benzene ring. So that rules A out. And an alkyl group is a group with the general formula CnH2n plus 1. So on C, we've got that CH3 group sticking out, whereas on D, we've got a CH2 group sticking out. Which one follows that general formula for the alkyl group? C. Number 16, you know your definition, you'll get this in a fraction of a second. Electrophiles are electron pair acceptors, so it's A. Number 17, so I've just drawn the brackets around the repeat unit, so we'll draw that monomer up now and see which one it is. So there's the monomer, so it's option C. Number 18, so fragment ions with M over Z43 are going to be C3H7 plus or CH3CO plus. So we need to look at these four and see if they do contain that fragment that could break off and give the fragment peak. So you can see that B, C and D do contain those fragments. So A must be the answer. Number 19. So which statement about IR radiation is not correct? So A is correct because, yeah, infrared radiation does cause some covalent bonds to vibrate more. B is correct. IR radiation is linked to global warming. C, infrared radiation is used to monitor gases because they use infrared spectrometers to monitor air pollution. 
So it must be D and it is because it's UV that causes the um, CFCs to break into chlorine radicals. And finally, number 20. So what are the key absorptions in this infrared spectrum? So we've got an OH of an alcohol absorption there. We've got a C double bond O absorption there. So which of these molecules has got those in? Option B.